So, last week, what we dealt with, I didn't know it was frightful. I didn't know it was challenging. But I've come to understand that it is. And so I'm, I'm going to deal with you different than I did with the first service. In the first service, we had a discussion. We talked about many things. Today, with the time that I've got, I'm going to talk with you on the subject again. What are you going to do about the judgment? That's what we're going to talk about. Now, I know it's a subject that's not welcomed, but it is a subject that we have to pay attention to. It is a subject that the Bible talks about. I cannot refrain from teaching it to you because it might be an uncomfortable subject. I need to reveal it to you so that you may see the truth. Further, I must teach it to you because as you know, it is my desire and it is God's will that each of us experience abundance in this life. And furthermore than an abundance in this life, a rich inheritance in the world to come. Now let me ask you, and this is what got me going off on the first service and we went off on the tangent. I need you to tell me that you have in your mind, those of you that do, the scripture that you hold on to that promises your increase and your abundance. Can somebody just tell me very briefly, I'm going I'm to take a few minutes of this time, and this is what messed up this morning, Holy Spirit really got in that service, might happen here. I want you to tell me right now, what's the scripture that you got, I see Sister Jafrida has her hand up, I'm going to go over there, well, I'm going to go to Sister Jafrida first, and what is it the scripture you have that says you are promised abundance and increase in this life? He said, be fruitful and multiply. Now, you're about to teach a lesson. That's one that's, that I taught that one the other day. Everybody doesn't quite understand that. She's saying that if you're being fruitful, you will increase. You will multiply. I will teach that on tomorrow. I'll continue on that. But not everybody can see that just yet. Give me a one that everybody holds on to. Uh, so, so, uh, come on. Uh, 2911 was brought up this morning. What it says what? Paraphrase? I got plans to prosper you, not harm you, give you hope and a future to bless you. How many got 2911 is one that you hold on to? Let me see the hands of those. That's a lot of folk. Okay, good. Glory to God for it. How about another? You had one, Miss Evelyn? God shall supply all my needs. God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. How many got that one you holding on to? He shall supply all my needs according to his riches. And see, there's an abundance there. All my needs. I got plans for you. Any other hand? Somebody else got one that you hold on to. Come on, Brother Corey. My will that you prosper and be in good health. And he has a condition, even as your soul, soul prospers. Good, you got that in there. Soul meaning your knowledge, your, 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 your mind in, in knowing my word. And then my sister, come on, what do you got here? Malachi. Malachi, which is what? Bring the tithes to the storehouse. That one was brought up, you see, that was brought up in the first service. You all have actually come to understand that God promises a blessing and an increase, but he has a condition with the increase. The increase comes with as you are, as your soul prospers, I have plans for you, plans to give you hope in the future. And then he goes on from that point. He said, therefore, even if you call on me and you seek me, then all of those things are going to come to pass. And then what was the other one I had? Oh, uh, can't do fruitful and multiply yet because we won't get it. But it was another one somebody else told me. What was it? The blessings of the Lord make it rich. The blessings of the Lord make it rich. You're holding on to that. And I was about to go to another one. And what you got, bro? What you got? Psalm, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The whole Psalm? Go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be one. You guys are picking it up that God intends for you to be blessed. Got somebody over here. Uh, uh, Giving us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Yes, okay, uh, Lillian, what you got? You be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Be blessed in the city. Deuteronomy 28th chapter, blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed in the country. Come on, uh, uh, Sister Weldon. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. How about that one, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God. How many got that one? Hold on to that. A few folk got that one, a few, okay. All right, anybody else with any other ones? Real quick, I'm going to take it. Say what? John uh, uh, 10, 10. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. All of these are abundant scriptures. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Ephesians 3 and 20. Ephesians 3, 20, which says. 
How many got that one? Ephesians 3.20. Be able to do exceedingly abundantly all that you could ever think about. Look, here's what I'm trying to say to you. The Bible is full of a wealth of scriptures talking about God's plan to bless you. He wants you blessed. I can go all the way back to the very beginning when he put Adam in the garden. What was there lacking that Adam had? Nothing. One of the things I'll probably deal with tomorrow, and it was part of the thing that happened, the Lord spoke to me yesterday, and he said, this is what I thought I would do today, but a whole lot of other stuff happened, and so I couldn't do what I thought I was going to do today, which was this. When he put man in the garden, there were three things he said to him. Watch this. He said, listen to me, hear my voice, do what I say do, and then you're going to have increase. Those are three things. I'm going to talk about those tomorrow night when I go online. But that, it possibly, of course, the Lord can take me anywhere and go from there. One second, Brother Mike. But see, here's what it was. So he said, if you do not eat of this tree, hear me, hear my voice, obey me, then you're going to have an increase. That's the fundamentals of what the whole scripture is about. Hear me, obey me, increase. All right? Now, Mike, I'm not taking any more scriptures right now. I'm sorry, but I'm going to go on because I've got to move on. Here's what we want to look at. God has salvation for you and me, which is based upon simply this, faith. We are saved by faith. Amen. But now, Tanya, here's what I want you to look at right here. I got a scripture, I got a line down there, the very first thing, God wants you saved. I come that you might have life, John 10, 10, but have it more abundantly. Know this, brothers and sisters. Put this up there. Salvation is just the beginning of the blessings God has in store for faithful believers. I need you to hear me. Salvation, look what I just wrote. I want you to say this because I want you to hear it. Salvation is just the beginning of the blessing God has in store for faithful believers. What did I just say? I want you to look at that one more time, and I want you to say it with emphasis for yourself. See, see, salvation is great. I want you to know that. I want you to know that being saved is the main reason Jesus came into the world. He said, for God so loved the world that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He intended for us to get saved. But he didn't intend for us just to be saved. He intended for us to be blessed. He intended for us to have abundance. What did Jesus say in John 10, 10? Say it to me. He said, the thief come but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have more abundance. When he says life, he's talking about I come that you might have salvation. And have now, beyond salvation and life and real life, and have life abundantly. It's more than being saved. It's more than just saying, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to die and go to heaven and I'm going to be blessed. No, God intends for you to be blessed here. Amen. If he didn't intend for you to be blessed here, why did he put Adam and Eve in a garden that had everything? Right. His will is that you have supplied my every need according to his riches. How did he do it? Gave Adam and Eve according to what he had. Everything. Whatever you ask for, you can receive it. God wants you. People, my brothers and sisters, I need you to understand me clearly. That God wants you saved, but more than just saved, he wants you increasing. He wants you to have an abundant life, not just here, but an abundance in, in, in well, I mean, not just in eternity, but also here. He wants it. Behold, what was it, 2911? The plans I have for you to give you hope, to prosper, to give you hope and a future. What did he not say? And he said, my brother brought up uh, uh, Psalms 23. He talks about, I shall not want. That wasn't for heaven. Amen. That was for now. I'm going to show you that the Bible is full of scriptures, of promises, of blessings, but we don't see it happening in the church. And the reason we don't is because there's a mask that's drawn over that part of your blessings. There's something that's contrary to, to your getting them that you keep holding on to that I've got to break a yoke so increase can come in this life and come in this year. 
he says, in Deuteronomy, and of course, now this is going to bother some folks because it's in Deuteronomy, but it's still God's word that doesn't change. In Deuteronomy, first chapter, uh, 28th chapter, first verse, listen to this. Let's go to Deuteronomy, first chapter, and I'm pulling off the top of my head. Holy Spirit's messing right now. Now it shall come to pass that if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, which first thing I say, listen to him. Do what he say do. Then you're going to increase. He said, if you obey the voice of the Lord to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you what? High. Set you what? High. Set you what? High, High above what? In other words, God said, I'm going to make a distinction between you if you listen to me and do what I tell you to do. I need you to understand that he has saved us in order to do something with that salvation. You weren't just saved so you can go to heaven. You were saved with a purpose and a mission that God has for every one of you. But you have got to hear his voice. Once you are saved, following the mission then the increase comes as you do what he tells you to do. God is like this. Uh, God is a stockbroker. Now, that's my paraphrase, so don't say, the bishop say the word of God, say God's stockbroker. I didn't say that. I'm saying, I said he's like a stockbroker. He knows which stock's about to go up. So what he does is he bring you to Apple stock when it's $5. And he say, now buy this stock. And you say, well, I got to buy that one. Because I said so. You don't tell me what to do. I'm going I'm to go over here and I'm going to buy some stock in Widget Company. Because it's $50, it's been going up. And you go buy the Widget Company and the Apple stock that's $5 start growing. You didn't buy it. Now, there's an increase because Apple now may be over two. I don't know. Anybody know what Apple stock is right now? It's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's already split, done stuff. So maybe it got up to a, it got up to a thousand by the time when it started. So you could have bought it at five. And if you'd done what God told you, you would have had this multiple increase if you right. bought when he told you to buy it. But instead, you bought widgets, and widgets no longer are popular they like little spinners, they gone, and you've lost all your money now. Why? Because you didn't listen to the stockbroker. You didn't listen to the man who was controlling the market. Do you not know that God controls everything in this world? When he tells you to do something, he's telling you to do it because he has plans to prosper you. And what you have to learn to do is to be obedient to what God said so you can buy the stock low and sell it high when he tells you to sell it. Oh, y'all, I'm trying to make a parallel here. I might not be good at doing this because this ain't the Bible, but I'm trying to show you something. How God will tell you what you need to do to prosper and what you need to do is just simply do what he tells you because he controls the world. Oh, how about this? This will work. He tells you at the state line, do not buy the next ticket. Wait until two tickets are sold and buy the third ticket. Now, now I'm, touching, I'm touching base now. So you see the first lady come up to the counter and she buys one ticket. And you hear the Lord, wait. You got to wait till the third ticket is sold. Somebody else come up and buy a ticket. What's the next thing? You're supposed to get in line, right? You're supposed to be right there at the counter. I want that third ticket. Because the third ticket is the winning ticket. And how much money are you going to make off of it? How many billions of dollars you know you're going to make? Now, can y'all follow the instruction I just said? If God told you he has fixed the thing, the mega ball, so that the 25th ticket is the one that's going to win. How many would be willing to go and buy that 25th ticket? Come on now, come on now. Tell the truth. You know, let's just be honest. We're growing in here. We're mature. And let's understand, God ain't through with us yet, right? So the mega ball, we done heard the 25th ticket sold at this service station right here is going to be the win that's going to be the winning ticket. How many of us would want to be the 21st, get that 21st ticket? One more time. God said it. We would be so inclined to do that. 
But yet God has already told us what we must do in order to have increase that's more than mega ball. God has given us simple things that we decide to say, well, I ain't going to do that. I don't see why I got to do that, why I got to do that. But if it were broken down so simple as that, God controls the universe. And when he tells us what we ought to do, he knows how to get us to increase. So fundamentally, what I have to teach you here is that God has saved you by your faith. And your faith has gotten you saved, but God wants you more than saved. He wants you living in abundance. But to live in abundance requires you listening to hear his voice and doing what he says do. Now, there are plenty of people that are satisfied with just being saved. I'm saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the way, can you lend me some money? I can't pay my mortgage. Bump that. God intends for you to be living and prospering. How many times we know that? All the scriptures you just said. He said, blessed is a man who, who meditates on his law both day and night. Yeah. And he said, everything he's doing going to prosper. It shall be like a tree planted by the sun. It's plenty of scriptures talking about that. Amen. What did Jesus say? Matthew 6, That was said a minute ago. Seek ye first kingdom of God. And what? All these things will be added. So let me go back to my statement again. Put it up there again. Ty. Put it up there again that says that salvation is just the beginning of the blessings God has in store for faithful believers. Okay. So you need to look at something, I'm saved. Tell somebody I'm saved. I'm saved. But you know what else? Let me tell you something else. They said, but I ain't just satisfied with being saved. I want to be rejoicing in all the abundance God got for me right here. All the abundance he got for me. And when I get to heaven, I know I'm going to be rejoicing. Is that right? Do you? I know some of y'all just waiting to get to heaven just to get in. <laughs> but I want you to understand, God got more than just you getting in. Yeah. That's it, that's if you look at Peter, he talks about, he says, I want you to have a rich inheritance. And if there's a rich inheritance, then there must be a poor inheritance too. <laughs> some folk just going to get that log cabin. I don't want the log cabin. I want me bigger than the Trump Towers. And I want the top 10 flows for me. Do you hear what I'm saying? I mean, whatever I can imagine, remember, if I can imagine it, he can do more than what I can imagine, right? So I have to always be thinking about and with an expectation of what I want God to do for me. But there are conditions of things that I must do to get the abundance. Now, I'm saved. I ain't got to do nothing else. Because I need you to understand People misunderstand me when I'm trying to tell you about the increase. Increase only comes with obedience. Salvation is free. But if you want all God got for you, you're going to have to hearken unto the voice. You're going to have to listen to it. My son, attend to my words. He said, my word is health, it's healing. He said, prosperity is on one hand and health and blessings on the other hand. God got all this for us, but it comes with hearing the voice. Okay, so with that being said, I was going to tell you a part of what my notes and things I wanted to do was tell you why I got to tell you the whole truth. I got to tell you. But I'm not going to tell you all, I'm going to tell you, you go read about it. It's in Ezekiel. And God made this statement. What I'm going to do is just read a little bit about it, just a little bit, just, just a little bit. But it's more than what I had down here because this is what it's going to do. Well, let me see, let me find a good thing. I'll just read from here. Uh, let's look in Ezekiel uh, 3 and 17. Ezekiel 3, 17. Watch. See, I have to do this. And folk are telling me I shouldn't do this. But I have to do it with the whole word of God. I can't just teach you part of it. Verse 17, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. I'm a shepherd. I'm a pastor. God's holding me accountable for you. And he said, therefore, hear a word from my mouth. And give them warning from me. Here's what God said. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. 
if I don't tell you the whole word of God, even though some of the word of God might make you mad, what God say he going to do to me? Look at that last sentence. Y'all ain't no pastor, so you don't pay no attention to it. But watch what I got to. He say, his blood I'll require at your hand. In other words, if I don't tell you the whole truth, now I can preach part of it. I can preach, oh, God's going to be so good to you. Your blessing coming. Hallelujah. Here come, the, here come, it's coming, it's coming. Get ready. You're going to get home. And thus saith the Lord, when you get home, there shall be a check in the mail. Everybody go, hallelujah. We will be flying everywhere. But I have to have you, I mean, you know, if it's going to, and when we, the way as tight as it is now, somebody done doing a whole lot of shaking going on. <laughs> but understand what I'm telling you. There are truths about all these wonderful things that God has, but he said, but you got to tell the whole truth. This stuff just don't come with you doing nothing. Folks think I'm saved and they don't owe God nothing. They think they don't owe God nothing. Well, I got to show you something. He said, warn them, because if you don't tell them, I'm going to hold their blood. God said, I'm going to deal with them. But if you don't tell them the truth, I'm going to hold you accountable. Now, I did this some years ago, many, many years ago. And folk have forgotten. This is a foundation scripture for me. So he says that, that I got to do it. Now, watch verse 19. Now, watch this one. This is my saving grace right here. Yet. If you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness, right. nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered. So see, I got to tell you, because your blood ain't going to be on me. And if I tell you and you act a fool, notice what he said happened to me. I will have delivered what? See, I got something to gain out of this. How come Bishop tell us all this stuff? Because he got something to gain. Now, that's probably what y'all want to hear all along. I got something to gain. Tell you the truth, and God say, he going to deliver me. He going to bless me for telling the truth even when you didn't want to hear it. But if I don't tell you the truth, and you bust hell wide open, guess what? He going to say, Jim, why didn't you tell them people my whole word? Well, Lord, if I told them the whole word, then they probably wouldn't come to church. They wouldn't bring their tithes. I had to tell them all the stuff that they wanted to hear because I needed a big church and I needed a whole lot of folks to come in there so that they can get, so they can hear the word and feel good and bring their money in there. And then you're going to say to me, what has it profited you? What has it profited you to have gained the whole world, had a big church, and then having delivered your own soul and you lost your soul because you didn't do what I told you to do? Let me tell you something. I ain't no fool. Let me tell you something. You don't know Jesus, you going to hell. Let me tell you something else. You don't act right by what God tell you, he going to get you. Now, after all that's been qualified, Lord, I done told him. I told him. So when it happened, I'm going to be up there saying, God, I told him, Lord. I told him. I told him. Now, see? So y'all understand, I'm looking out for myself. Now, so don't get mad if I tell you, look at it, and if I show you where it is, you get mad with God. All right, so now you go read the rest of that stuff. I'm not going to do it. Now, here it comes. The question is, what you going to do about the judgment? Let's look at something here. We're going to take Hebrews 9.27. You know that one, right? <laughs> Hebrews 9.27. I'm going to show you some more. Hebrews 9.27, and it says this, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, there's a judgment. There's a judgment. So as, soon, as certain as there's death, there's going to be a judgment. I got to tell you that. Now, I'm not going to hold out on the judgment part a whole lot because I'm trying to get to how you're going to get the increase. But see, judgment is for, well, let's let the Lord to tell us in, in Revelation, in Revelation 22, 12, Jesus says this. He says, and behold, Je Revelation 22, 12, Behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his, his what? Which means you are saved by saying, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But God has more than just salvation. He has a reward. I need you to see it. I'm not going to preach that. I need you to see 
that there is a reward for the works that you do. Salvation is not based upon works, but rewards are. I need you to hear me. What did Jesus say? Read. He says, and my reward is with me. What's it? Do you see it? Say that. Read the rest of it. To give to who? Everyone. According to? Jesus. Now, we already realize there's going to be a judgment. The judgment is to define what your reward is. I'm talking to saints now. If you don't know Jesus, I'm not talking to you right now. I'm talking to the saints. I'm talking to my church members, my the folk in here. If you are saved and have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there is a reward that's available to you dependent upon the works that you do. All right. That reward is not just in heaven, it is right now. Yeah. If there's going to be an increase in 2018, you've got to start doing the things so that God starts rewarding you in 2018 and not wait until you dead. Am I making any sense? I have to, because I'm covering a lot of bases. I know there's a lot of teaching that don't tell you, to tell you you ain't got to do nothing. That's fine for other pastors or other churches. I want you prospering according to the word of God and what the word of God says. So he says, I'm coming quickly, and this happens to deal with the judgment. That judgment is going to be to give to everyone according to According to what? Okay, let's make the point be a little more clear here as we go on with a few other notes I got here. And understand this. The sinner, now I said I was talking to my own folk, the sinner will account for his sin. And he's going to be punished for it at the judgment. The Christian, on the other hand, has the opportunity to receive rewards. Because here's what God does. Jesus, remember when John the Baptist saw him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. They come to take away the sin of the world. He said that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. What happens is salvation is this. To, be, to believe on the Lord. In fact, there's an act scripture I got there. Tanya, whoever's up there doing it, so I don't have to walk back up on that stage and back up there again and go get the scripture. But in Acts, there's a jailer that asks the question, that say, what must I do to be saved? Y'all got my notes? What? There it is. Thank you. And they say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your whole household. Understand this. All you got to do to be saved is to believe. And that believing has to be a sincere believing. So everyone in this room, I trust, can believe on Jesus and is saved. But what good is it being saved, poor, broke down, begging, starving, when all the word of God say, I created you to be having abundance? The poor, broke down, saved folk are the ones that ain't doing what God told them to do to get the abundance. And they believe in God going to open up the windows of heaven, pour me out such a blessing, but they ain't tithing. Come on. They're going to believe God got a plan for me, but they ain't walking the plan. Come on, he say, they, they say, he believe I'm going to prosper and be in good health, but even as your soul, but they don't do no studying. And they say, him shall be like a tree planted by the living water, but what is happening? But you're running around with the wrong kind of crowd, and you think God going to bless you? See, you is saved, but you ain't got nothing because you ain't doing what he told you to do. Amen. See, there's not just, a, see, as soon as you accept Christ, God started looking at you now for your good works to reward you now. Amen. Now, not wait until I get in heaven. 
You've heard a lot of preachers talk about the prosperity. There is prosperity now. But where they miss it is that there is something you have to work to get it. Jesus said, if you don't work, you don't eat. And somewhere in the church, we come down to the point, I, I know I got to work in the world to get a job. But when I come to the church, I don't come to church to work. I come to church to get blessed. But you can't get blessed unless you study. You can't get blessed unless you hear. You can't get blessed unless you're doing what God told you. And Christians want to know, how come I don't have this? And how come I don't have this? Are you doing what God told you to do? Well, I ain't got to do nothing. I'm saying, no, you save. Okay, save with your poor self. <laughs> and when you get to heaven, okay, glory to God. But that ain't what I want. I want to have everything I need when I need it. I might not be a millionaire, but you know what? As long as I got my health, you can keep your millions and be sick. Let me have my health, and you know what? Give me my health, and I'll figure out how to get the million. But if I got the million and ain't got no health, I'm going to give away my million trying to get my health. Money ain't everything. If my family is not prospering, if my family, I got to go get Jim out of jail all the time, go, 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 go find Adrian off the street, get all the kind, whatever the stuff is. If I got to do that kind of stuff, I don't want that kind of life. I like what God has given me with my family all up in the church, married to the right kind of folk. I ain't got to be worried about Adrian getting whopped upside her head, Jim doing nothing crazy. God has blessed me in ways I might not have money, but I got life. And let me get you to understand, sir, you got to stop looking at things according to the way of the world. God has blessed some of y'all. Y'all sitting up there with your blessed self, and God said, I'm ready to bless you more. But you sitting up saying, I'm saved. Hallelujah. I'm highly favored. And, and so you got one car. God intended for you to have three cars. God intended for your children to be blessed. He said, bless, blessed in the country, blessed in the city, blessed in your rising up, blessed in your sitting. God intended for you to be abundantly blessed. And see, but you got to understand there's something to do. All right. Now. Let's go further. Let's go further here. Now, we got that. Oh, let me show you something else here. Psalms 3410. Here's a blessing scripture. Look what it says right here. The young lions, Psalms 34, the young lions lack and suffer hunger. Hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not what? Shall not what? Shall not what? Shall not what? I, I, I want to hear one word. Shall not what? Lack. Shall not what? Lack. Shall not what? Lack. Those who love the Lord, who seek the Lord, shall not what? Lack. Okay. And so here's what he said. If you lack in something, you missing something. If you lack in something, what you missing? You missing what God told you to do, so you should not lack. If you have lack in your life, you are missing something. The lack is letting you know you're missing something. If there's lack in your life, it's letting you know you are missing something. The lack came to let you know you're missing something. Well, I know I'm missing something. What you have to understand, if you got lack, you don't need to go to the world to increase your lack. You need to go to the word because the lack is revealing you are missing something. And what you are missing is what God would have you to do because, give me Jeremiah 29, 11, which your sister just brought up over here, and to show you, you're missing something. Watch what you miss. Jeremiah 29, 11. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Because I need them to see it. It's in my mind. Holy Spirit, give now, I want you to take that to, give me the, give me the uh, uh, New International Version of that. Okay, I, I'm going to take it right here. For I know the plan. That what? I have All right, now, okay, God got a plan. If you got lack in your life, he said those who seek the Lord shall lack what? No good thing. And if you got lack, you're lacking because you're missing something. God said, 
I know the plans I have for you. So, okay, God got a plan. But what is his plan? He said, plans to prosper you. Well, let's stop right there. That's all we need. That's one. Plans to do what? But if I'm lacking, I'm not prospering. If I'm lacking, that means I ain't prospering. And if I'm not prospering, that means I'm lacking. But what am I lacking? I'm lacking money. I'm lacking this. I'm lacking that. What I'm lacking, I don't know the plan. If I knew the plan, I would prosper. But if I don't know the plan, I come up in lack because I'm missing something. I'm missing the plan. Because if I walk in the plan, the plan will make me prosper. You understand what I'm saying? What we lack is not money. We lack the knowledge of the plan. He said, now go back to the other one. He said, thoughts. Now watch this one. He says, in the King James, in the New King James, he says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. What am I lacking? I don't know what God planning. I don't know what God thinking for me. But if I know what God thinking, if I know what God planning, if I know what God want for me, I do what God tell me, I'm going to prosper. Too many of us come to church looking to be blessed, and we're looking for blessing in all the wrong places. <laughs> can the preacher bless me? Can the choir bless me so I can go, oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, I feel so blessed. But you broke blessed. Yes, sir. Call yourself highly favored in your brokenness. Blessed and highly favored. Can you loan me $50 until next paycheck? I'm just slightly behind. But if you knew the plans, he said, I created you to be the head, not the tail, to be a lender, not the borrower. But if you borrow him, obviously you don't know the plan, so you didn't have to borrow. Now, come on, come on. He said, I got thoughts. Another thing, if you're lacking, he said, I got thoughts of peace. How many of y'all trouble going through some kind of depression? Oh, Lord, I know I'm saved, but things ain't working out like they're supposed to. Oh, Jesus, help me. Oh, Lord, I know maybe this is just what I got to go through because he must be trying to teach me something. Yeah, teach you, you lacking teach you you ain't paying attention if you knew the plan my plan wasn't for you to be walking oh Jesus oh Lord have mercy that ain't his plan for you David say I was young and I'm old I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed go begging bread and yet here you are can you give me a loan until Friday I'll, I'll pay you back I just want a hamburger today Are you hearing me? Am I messing somebody up? I, that was from Popeye. You know that. Wimpy used to do that. Does anybody remember Wimpy? Now, this is one of those moments when Bishop has gone off the rocker. You have to learn how to spit out the bones, because every now and then Bishop get a little bony, and then sometimes spit out the bones and take the meat. Somebody else told me, say, Bishop, people can't do that. They can't deal with you the way you is. And I said, well, maybe I need to change. And then God reminded me, I call you the way you is. Be what you is and not what you ain't. So, okay. So those that can deal with me can deal with me. And those with me can't deal with what I ain't, they can't. All right. So thoughts of peace. And to give me, give me a future and hope. So God has a plan. So with that thought being made, let's go on to something else. So we see the young lions, well, wait, see the young lions, people strong gonna suffer lack. But then let's go on with something else. 
Ah, oh, I want to see if I got another scripture here. Each day is an opportunity to store up for ourselves not only treasures in heaven, when Jesus says store for yourself treasures, you know, but not only treasures in heaven, but treasures right here. The question is, do we really think they're worth it? Is it really worth me sacrificing sin in order to get a blessing of God? What y'all say? I want you to think about it for a moment. Is it worth you giving up sin to obey God to get the prosperity that he wants you to have? Now, you're saying it because you were in church. But wait a minute until somewhere during the week ain't no church members around. And you're out there with the world folk. And they say, you know, come on, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Is it worth you standing tall and getting the rebuke of your friends in order to stand with God? Is it worth it? Come on now. Most of the time, it ain't worth having your friends turn against you. It's not worth having your family turn against you. It is better to just go along with a little sin. Right? See, you in church, you're just saying that now. But you know all of us have gone along with a little sin just to get in, to be accepted, to get our friends to pat us on the back. You a good old guy. You all right. You know what? I thought you were one of them holy rollers, but you just like all the rest of us. That's a statement of condemnation. You have to recognize God called you to be a light. And when he called you to be a light, he say, so that men might see your good works. You ain't no light unless you got some work to show that light, so that the light can shine on it, so that men might see your good works. And when you do your good works, God is going to reward you because he said, I am going to reward every man according to what? And if there ain't no works, there can't be no reward. If you're just sitting up in church, you can't get no bills paid. You got to do something for the glory of God. Now, like I said, that makes folk mad when I tell them you got to serve God. They tell me that I'm trying to make y'all slaves of God. Amen. Amen. I want you to serve God. Now, when God say, if you put yourself to serving me, I don't call you slaves. I don't even stop at friends. I call you sons. Every one of you is a son of God, and God has a plan for your life. Now, so let me check. Oh, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Hmm. Hmm. Let me end up on this, because I'm about to do, because I'll be finishing. I'll do this teaching later on. I just want to get a good closing point here. I told you that, and I'm going to finish it up on this. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when the judgment comes, you will be judged not according to your sins because the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world took your sin. Watch this. When I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, the day I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, genuinely, we have to talk about that later, the day I did it, and, and my works are actually showing that I did it, then what that, let's just say, in mm, November 15th, 1970, I genuinely accepted Jesus as my Lord and said, I really did, and it was around that time, somewhere, because it was my first semester in, 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 in college, when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I had joined the church, some seven years earlier, but I didn't accept Jesus. The day I accepted Jesus, not the day I joined the church, whatever sins I had committed all the way up to 1970, God erased them. 
Whatever sins I did on November 15th, after I accepted Jesus, God erased them. Whatever sins I've committed from November 15th, 1970, God already had taken care of them. Sin was paid for by the death of Jesus on the cross. So I'm not going to be held accountable for my sin to put me out of heaven. Do you understand that? Neither you, if you've accepted Jesus, you going to heaven. You will not have to account for your sins. Do you hear me? So don't get caught up on what sins. Now the world going to remind you of your sin. You know you sin, you sin, sin. You know, anybody ever watch Game of Thrones? You remember when they were ringing that bell? Shame. Shame. Nobody ever saw that? See, people in another world, they don't even know where you're coming from, Bishop. Don't worry about it. Just erase all of that. The world will always point out your faults. God has removed and forgotten your faults. If you've accepted Jesus, don't even worry about them anymore. But here's what you look at. He said, I'm coming to reward every man according to his work. Once you are cleared of your sin, God then looks at you not because of sin, so he doesn't see any sin. He sees your life from this point on as, well, what have you done for me lately? See, my sins are gone. So why I got to stand before a judgment? I stand before a judgment not to be punished, not to be accounted for my sins. I stand for what I've done since 1970 for the glory of God to receive my reward. Because I accepted Jesus, I've got a reward coming for the life I have lived since 1970. Because all before that time, I lived in sin without Jesus. My life began at the point when I accepted Jesus. Eternal life came right then and there. And from that point on, God started looking at me, and every good thing I did, I got a reward coming for it. Now, every sin I did, I, I don't have a reward, but that's part of my life that I lost when I could have gotten a reward. You see? That's you. That's all of us. But what about a person that has never accepted Jesus? When they die, the judgment's going to be there. God's going to say, okay, Fred, step up here. Who, me? Yeah, you're going to have to account for yourself. Well, what about my brother I was with? What about my other friend I was with? Uh-uh, you by yourself. Because I'm going to check every man according to his own. Call him up here by himself. Stand up there before God. Yes, sir. I was a good man. I went to church every Sunday. I praised you. I lifted up my hands. He said, but did you ever accept me? I want you to know, Brother Jim, come up here. Yes, so Lord. <laughs> uh, you joined the church too, didn't you? Yeah, but when did you accept me? Several years later, I accepted you as my Lord and Savior. Because you know something, just being part of the church, you weren't saved. I, did, I didn't know, I, I know it now, Lord, and I didn't know it at that time, but I joined church. But I, I found out I was saved in 1970 years later. And that's why you are saved, because you accepted me. It ain't about what church you're part of. God looked back at Fred and said, it ain't the church you're part of. I don't care what church you're part of. I don't care whether you Baptist. I don't care whether you Methodist. I don't care whether you fire baptized. I don't care if you speak in 27 tongues. All right. I don't care. Did the music play hard on that? That's to let you know. <laughs> I want you to understand that now I don't see Jesus paying the price for your sin. Right. So who going to pay for your sin, Fred? My Lord. Well, I, I would like Jesus to pay for it. It's too late now. Jim, who paid for your sin? Jesus paid for mine. Wow. Fred, who paid for your sin? Well, I'd like to get Jesus. It's too late now. So, Fred, you know what? I'm going to have to judge you according to your sin. All right. And according to your sin, can't no man be saved. Wow. As a result, I gave you a choice. And because you didn't be become personal with me, you didn't believe in Jesus, you didn't try to do nothing for me, then I'm going to have to cast you out. You didn't want to be with me. Yes, I did. I went to church every Sunday. No, but you didn't know me. You knew of me. You knew me because a bishop teaching or some other preacher teaching. But you didn't take the time to study. 
You didn't take the time to learn. And as a result, be departed from me. Understand this one thing. Christians will not be judged according to their sin. They will be judged to be rewarded according to their works. There's a statement I put down there. Tanya, give me that. I'm going to end up on these two statements. There's two of them. One about sinners and one about, uh, uh, about Christians. My bold statements I got, if you'll do it, and you're going to make me run up here. As a, if a Christian sins and does not, okay, that's the word. If a Christian sins and does not repent, God won't get him, but God won't give him either. That's one of them. That means, that means, no, good works are not necessary for salvation. That's a good one too. But they are necessary for rewards in heaven. She's trying to read my mind. Uh, but it's this one. Those who respect the Lord will receive an eternal reward they cannot lose. See what I'm saying? Though, listen to me. She's going to have to find that one. It's further down. It's item D down there. Those who respect the Lord will receive an eternal reward they cannot lose. Listen to me. Don't worry about what she got, okay? I'm up here. Those who respect the Lord, look at me. <laughs> Those who respect the Lord will receive an eternal reward they cannot lose. That means if you honor God, you're going to get an eternal reward you cannot lose. But those who reject the Lord will receive eternal condemnation they cannot change. Do you hear what I'm saying? There it is. She's got it now. See, if I've accepted Jesus, I'm going to get an eternal reward by the works that I do that I can't lose. But if I've rejected Jesus, Jesus, that God is going to look at me and say, let me look at your sin and I'm going to judge you and condemn you according to your sin because Jesus did not pay the price for you because you didn't let him do it. You didn't ask him to do it. So I'm closing right here because I'm going to be teaching on it more. I don't have to hurry up and give you a lot of stuff. But I want you to know this. This year is going to be a year of increase. I'm going to show you from the word of God what you must do. And there is stuff you must do in order to obey him so that these things will come true for you. Do you hear me? Let me tell you what's happening. God said this is the year of increase. Amen. Just like he said last year. And with the thing that he told us about last year. He did it. And if he did it for last year, he can do increase this year. Amen. But the condition is, what does God say to you, you must do? And you must do what he tells you to not what he tell me to do. You got to listen to hear his voice so you can follow and know his plan for your own life. Amen. Not a plan for, for Deshaun's life. Not a plan for Brittany's life. Right. Got to understand, not a plan for Corey's life. You got to know the plan for your life. Amen. And I've got to help you understand the word so you can walk in God's plan for you. For you. Then you get blessed. I have to get you over the hurdle to realize salvation is just the beginning of God's wonderful blessings for you. He wants you to have abundance now and abundance in eternity. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Does anybody have any challenge, any question right now? Stick your hand up and I'll answer it and we're getting out of here real quick. I need to make sure you got this. Because I'm building, I'm, listen y'all, I can't do it in this sermon, but like the old preachers say, I'm going somewhere with this. I need you to hear me. Any questions, any challenges, your prosperity, your blessings are coming this year, but it is contingent upon your willingness to hear and obey. Yes, sir, thank you so much, but I want to make sure you got it. Say it a little bit louder for me. I'll stand up so we can hear you. So. Say that um, you're saved and everything. Say that you're saved and everything. But you don't repent. Of your sins. But you don't repent. Yes, sir, but you still sin, but you accept God as your... I'm sorry. I'm saying. Uh, He's going to give you a microphone. He's going to sound like a good question. He's going to ask, go. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start over. Go on, that's good. But 
say that you accept the Lord as your, um, your Lord and Savior, but you don't repent for the sins you do. Everybody uh, sins, and we know that, but you don't repent. Are you still held accountable for those? Is he still going to hold you accountable in the same way? If we use the word repent from the standpoint we don't stop, do you understand what I'm saying? You cannot continually, if you are saved, you cannot continually keep on sinning. Every now and then, every one of us is going to fall. We're going to make a mistake. And we're going to do sin. And that sin like that, we say, Lord, I screwed up. He's going to forgive us for that. But we can't every day get up and do the same thing every day, do the same sin and go to bed at night, Lord, forgive me for my sin in the day. You know, you cuss like a sailor. And so every day you get up, you cussing folk out. But you say, I'm saved. I can cuss out anybody I want to cuss out. And when you go to bed at night, you say, Lord, forgive me for cussing out Sarah, Tom, Peter, and John. <laughs> Next day you get up, Lord, and you cuss out Tangie, Mike, Charlena. And you go to bed at night, Lord, forgive me for cussing out Tangie, Mike, and Charlena. Let me get you to understand, sir. You cannot continually do this with God and really be saved. Because if you're saved, what happens when you cuss out folk on one day, cuss out them on the next day, about the third day, something start working on you saying, uh-uh, you need to quit this. You cannot continue. And the Bible says, those who practice such deeds will not get in. None of us can practice or allow sin to continue to be in our life and think we're going to really please God. We got to stop it. Man, that's what he say. Turn from your wicked way. I, am I answering your question, but I need to make sure you're going to mess up. I've messed up. We all have messed up. And God covers all our mess up, and we confess it. But when we confess it, let me tell you, I, I've always said this congregation, this is me. This ain't God. I ain't never said none of this stuff. If you cuss out seven people a day, ask God for forgiveness on that day you cussed out seven. Tomorrow when you get up, try to cuss out one less than seven. <laughs> and the next day, only cuss out five. The next day, four. At least be working on it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't keep cussing out seven every day and think you're going to get away with that. Now that's me. Okay, y'all understand. If you can quit, quit. But I'm trying to help you, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying, bro? you got to work on that because God's going to be looking at your heart. If your heart doesn't work on this, you ain't going to get no, you're not saved. Got it? Let me go in the back. Yes. Speak it up louder. Okay, and then I got one more hands over here. And y'all understand, I'm just trying to, I want you to understand this message. We're going to go home in a minute. Yes, ma'am. So I know a couple of, a few men who had received Christ when they were younger, but now they have um, stopped their relationship with Christ. Yes. What kind of state are they in? If they have given up Christ, rejected him, listen, salvation cannot be taken away from you if you really are truly saved. You can reject Christ, and if they have rejected Christ, they decided, okay, I'm going off on this other religion over here. Then they have rejected him. Salvation doesn't work for somebody who doesn't walk in the walk. I will show you scriptures later on that when you are saved, you got to show the fruits of repentance. I did it on last Monday night when I said, be fruitful. God expects you to bear fruit. You cannot not bear fruit and say you say Because God, if you say the Spirit of God, when I wait until I teach you about the Word of God that's in you, that Word of God's going to bear fruit. You're going to be productive if God is in you. But there are a lot of folks that ain't got God in them, think they do, and they ain't producing no fruit, and they're satisfied. You better check yourself. If they have rejected Christ, they are without Christ. Because life is choice-driven. Got it? Am I answering your question? Counterpoint me if you need to, if, you, if I need to respect for it. Was there another hand over here? Yes. And when, let me hear what you got to say, sir. He must be contrite in your repentance. In other words, in other words you should be sincere. Yes, you must be sincere in your repentance. Is that a, is that a question? Okay, okay. Everybody needs to understand, I respond to questions. And it is my job, and I have to get everybody to understand, I'm the one that teaches the message. That's quite all right. Thank you. But I understand. You want folk to understand that you do understand it. But here's important, people. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 11. Go there for a moment. 
This is my last word on this so you can hear it and you will know it so I can put everybody in here in check. Everybody. Ephesians 4.11. Uh, you, you got a question? Give me the question and then I'm going I'm to teach, teach this message. Go. Mic's not on. Push the mic up. So many people say, you know what? Uh-huh. Push that mic on for you. You know how to push that button up. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Yes, sir. And, you know, I, you know, I, it's like, okay, I know that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but he didn't die for us to sin. He did, did it that when we sin, we'll be forgiven. Right. But I can't understand why so many people feel like I've even heard, you know, deacons, you know, like, well, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. I said, but he didn't die for us to sin. He died when we sin, you know, he will forgive us, but we can't be repetitive. You know. It's exactly right. So are they, I mean, are they going to, they're not going to be saved. Everyone that says I can sin yes. because I got Jesus is a liar. Okay. In fact, I'll show you in John, 1 John, where it says that later on. I can't do it all today. Where it says, if you say you got God and you don't walk in the light, you a liar. You go read 1 John 5, 1st, 2nd chapter somewhere in there. So no. And remember this, in many churches, it is taught that once you are saved, you can do anything you want to do. That's not true. Read the word. Okay, now, here's what I need everybody to recognize. So be very careful. He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some to be evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. The pastors and teachers is what I am. I'm called, I'm anointed to teach you, to pastor you. When you start talking to other folk, remember, you ain't got no anointing right right. to be pastoring, teaching other All folk. Right. You can share what you have, but don't put yourself out as an authority when God didn't call you as part of his plan to be an authority. Because if you speak the wrong word and somebody go the wrong way, God going to hold you accountable. One, for being outside of your anointing, and two, for lying. Now, watch this other thing. My purpose is to do this, to equip, go ahead, to perfect, next verse 12, verse 12, for the equipping that's perfecting, if you take that to the, uh, uh, in, uh, give me the, can, give me NIV so you can see it, to prepare God's people for works of service. My job is to get you ready to do service that God called you to, not what he didn't call you to. Some folk are walking in what they ain't been called in. And if you ain't walking in where you've been called, you're not going to prosper. You got to walk in your calling. I got to help you know what your calling is. That's why I told you two weeks ago to start praying so God will show you the cross you have to bear. And well, let's go down to verse 13 for a minute. I'm going to read this real quick. Because I'm, okay, now I'm going wrong, okay. Uh, 14, because you need to read the rest of it. Then, after you've learned, you'll no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, teaching and cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. There are folk that are out here to rob you of your reward, rob you of your blessing, and there are demons that are out there to do it. But God gave you some so that you can... I, I, 